In this lesson, we're going to model the body of the beer bottle. Here we are in 3D Studio Max, and within your project files, you should have been supplied an image called Budweiser.jpg. We're going to bring this image into 3D Studio Max and use it as a visual guide to draw out a silhouette of the beer bottle. From there, we'll be able to use 3D Studio Max's modifiers and do a 360 degree rotation of that curve, which will build the silhouette of this model. To get this image into 3D Studio Max, we should go to our front view, click on wireframe, go down to viewport background, viewport background. And before I click on this, I just want to let you be aware that a lot of options within 3D Studio Max have hotkeys to them. On the right hand side, you'll see a corresponding keystroke. If you were to hit Alt plus B, you would be brought into the viewport background. And to show you this, I'll just click on our viewport here and hit Alt plus B at the same time. And you can see that our viewport background tab is launched. Next, what you need to do is click on files. Navigate to the location of where the Budweiser JPEG is located. Click on it. We also want to match the bitmap size so that our viewport doesn't control the size of the image. We also want to lock the pan and zoom so that as we move our camera back and forth in and out, sorry, uh, the picture will stay where it's supposed to be. Once you have that set, you can hit OK. You see now that the image is brought into 3D Studio Max and we can start creating the body of it. So we're going to go to the Create panel under Standard Primitives. We're going to go, or, sorry, we're going to move over to Shapes, click on Line, and we're going to start drawing the silhouette. We're going to start right down here at the base, right on the grid. And we'll click once, and if you click and hold to add another point, you can drag your mouse and kind of get a bit of a curve here for the beer bottle. So from here, we'll click over here and draw another one. And this can take a little bit of practice, and if you're off by a bit, don't worry about it. You can always go back and manipulate these later. So now I'm in a bit of a problem here. I, if I were to move my camera back, the line tool would stop. But we need to keep going up further. So to get um, the viewport to move with your mouse, just put the mouse wherever you want and hit I. And the viewport will kind of move towards that location for you. So now we have the option to make another spot. We'll hit I again. Just click again and hit I and just move up the beer bottle. And we'll just keep moving up the beer bottle. Okay, so here we're at a bit of a lip. What we want to do is get two points really close together here to help build a sharp edge. So I got two points next to each other, and we'll build another one around the corner here. Move our camera up. And it has, it's hard to see here because we have some condensation, but if you look on the other side, it looks like it dips in a little bit. So we'll just go over here and we'll just kind of let that dip in a tiny bit there. And this is the point where the, the actual lip starts. So we'll click once here. Around. And right at the lip, there's a, it's more of a hard edge there. So I'll just click once instead of left clicking and holding. And we're just going to start moving down the inside of the beer bottle. Now it's hard to tell how thick the bottle is because of the caustics. So I'm just kind of eyeballing how, how thick I think it is. Now while I'm doing this, this is not the only way to model a beer bottle. You could have started with a polygon model method. Starting from a cube or a cylinder, you could have squashed and stretched a bunch of vertices until you got the silhouette of the beer bottle. I just find this one has the most control after lofting the surface. We can see, we can just control these points actually, and we can see instant real-time results of what it would look like when it's lofted. Okay, so in our perspective viewport, I can see the silhouette of our beer bottle, and it's ready to be uh, lofted. And I apologize, I'm using the word loft because I'm native to uh, Maya. However, the modifier that we're going to use in 3D Studio Max is called lathe. So to click on our, we click on our modify tab. Over in the modifier list, we're going to choose lathe. 
Okay, so once we have lathe on our model, you can see that it's not getting the exact result that we're looking for. And that's because the axis of our curve was uh, not centered up to the grid. To fix that, we can either just move the axis or go down to the line and adjust the axis there. I'm just going to open up the modifier and just adjust the axis until we get the shape that we're looking for. Now I'm going to move to our front view and just make sure that we get this perfectly right on with the image plane here. A little bit more. Okay, great. Now, another option I want to take a look at here before we convert this to an editable poly is the amount of segments that we're getting on this model. We're going to add a mesh modifier, a mesh smooth modifier to this later. So now that, that will allow us to work with this at low resolution until we're ready to do our final render, and then we can up the segments. But for now, let's just lower this down to about 10. Okay, now that we get our segments down to 10, I want to point out something else here. Uh, the reason why we're getting so much resolution uh, horizontally opposed to vertically is because of the interpolation of our curve. To fix that, we can just go down to our line, and by default, I have show end result on. But yours may be like this when you click on the line. If you want to see the end result, just click on the show end result on toggle. From here, we want to move down to steps under interpolation. We want to lower this down a little bit till we get something a little bit more user friendly. It's like one should do for us. Okay, and at this point, we can just right click on our lathe modifier, hit collapse all, hit yes. And then we'll right click on editable mesh and convert that to an editable poly. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and add a material to this model to get it from looking pure black so we can kind of see a little bit of the, the mesh and how it's working with each other. So we can hit M or we can go click on this icon, Material Editor. From here, our slate view will open. And if you're using an older version of Max, you'll actually be opened up with the regular version. You can just toggle that down and our material editor will look like this. But because I like using the slave view, we're just going to switch over to that. And this uh, started in uh, Max 2011. You can create a material standard, standard. And with the material selected and our object selected, we can click on this icon right here. I assign material to selection. So now our material is assigned. We can change the draw mode to black lines. And the reason why our object is turning out black like this is because it's, all the normals are actually facing inwards. If we want to get them facing out towards the camera. We can just go select all the polygons and hit flip. At this point, you can see that the gray material has been now assigned to our model. Okay, in the next lesson, we're going to go ahead and fine tune some of these edges and get it ready for the modeling of the cap.